Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be making an NFT marketing case study for the NFT project Art of Mob. For those of you who don't know, Art of Mob is currently one of the hottest NFT projects in the entire ecosystem. And as we speak three days after the mint, these guys were able to make over $200,000 worth of secondary royalties. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how did these guys manage to build that hype, build that momentum, mint out a project as a free mint, which usually all flop and make no secondary volume. So how were these guys able to do that and make all those secondary royalties? My hope is that you can learn from Art of Mobs a success and you can apply that to your own project. By the way, if this is the first time we meet, my name is Leon. I am the founder of unfungible.xyz an NFT strategic consulting and marketing company aimed at helping projects get off the ground, market their collection, and sell out. So if after watching this video, you still have any questions, feel free to click on the link in the description of this video or go to unfungible.xyz to book a call with me or one of my team members so you can learn how we can help you, how we can help your project, and how you can get involved with us. All right? With that said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is, as we speak, Art of Mob currently have 166,000 followers on Twitter, and they have 113,000 fo um, co community members on Discord. So 113K Discord members. Now, before we get started, I see it as important to cover uh, Art of Mob's sellout formula. And this is a formula that I see 95% of projects usually follow. They follow this exact same step-by-step -step formula made up of five phases. So I'm going to be sharing with you what are each and every one of those phases that Art of Mob followed, what does it exactly look like, and how can you apply that to your own project. I want you to think of those five phases as the ingredients for a cooking recipe. You can't really make a dish without having all those recipes. And if any one of those is missing, the entire dish doesn't taste the same. Each one of those phases is incredibly important to go smoothly through, and you can't jump to phase two or phase three without having successfully completed phase one. And this is what I'm going to be showing you exactly. So what are those five phases? The first phase happens to be the Twitter engagement farming phase of a project. Phase two is a Discord release. Phase three is a quantum growth of a project. Phase four is called the maturing phase of the project. And finally, we have Mint. So let's get started with phase one and let's see what does that look like uh, for Art of Mobs. So, so phase one is the Twitter engagement farming and most of that happens on the first week of launch, assuming that there is a six to seven week launch window for a project. And this is the typical average. Projects usually uh, range between five weeks to eight weeks, depending on the scale, the market conditions, the marketing budget. There's a lot of variables, but this is the typical average. So let's hop on Twitter and see what does the Twitter engagement farming phase look like. So right now we are on Twitter and what I'm going to be doing is scrolling all the way down to their first ever tweet. So we can see how did they, how did they initiate their launch. Perfect. There we go. So here we are on May 3rd. We can see May 3rd was their first ever tweet. Um, it was basically a teaser video that has almost 5,000 likes, 3,000 retweets, and 2,000 comments. These guys did an incredible job uh, on their launch launching campaign, on the engagement farming. So what does the phase one engagement farming uh, strategy look like? Basically, for the first week all your tweets, all the tweets on Art of Mob or projects that typically follow this formula uh, are very similar. So these all start with an attention grabbing headline, welcome to Art of Mob. And then they have a call to action that tells people to engage with this post. Usually the common sentence is any interaction with this tweet will be considered for whitelist. And as you're going to see, Every post in the next week follows this exact same formula. So on May 4th, the second tweet, we have, you are early. Any interaction with this tweet will be considered for mob list, whitelist, with hashtags. May 5th, 
here's Johnny, don't be like Johnny. Any interaction with this tweet will be considered for mob list. May 6, again, something, sometimes you got to kill them with kindness. First 1,000 to react will be considered for mob list and some flowers. You get the idea. This is the exact template that most 95% of projects that are launching as of June 2020, this is the marketing strategy that works. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how did these guys get 5,000, 3,000, and 2,000 um, comments in terms of interaction on their posts? Um, and trust me, it's not luck. They just they didn't just put that video out with those hashtags and that exploded. No, luck doesn't exist in this market. Uh, luck doesn't exist in business. So as we speak, there are three ways to get your to, to, to initiate that engagement farming spark to get those people to interact with you. What are those three ways? The first way is to do paid influencer retweet campaigns. So you pay influencers in the Ethereum or the Solana space to retweet uh, a tweet that you make. Number one. Number two is you do paid Twitter ads. Number three is you have one big influencer or one big project shill your your project. So someone have someone big talk about your project, give you a shout out. In Art of Mobs case, how do we find out which one it is? How do I usually do it is I go to the retweets and I scroll all the way down. So I'm going to be doing that so you don't have to. All right, guys, perfect. Here we are. So we are at the very first retweets that were done on Art of Mob. Keep in mind, retweets are always in chronological order. So the very last tweets were the first one that were made when the post came out. So there's two things I'm looking for right now to identify which of the three methods they use. Number one, are there any big influencers that were part of the first retweets on this, uh, on, on this account? So right here from the very couple first ones, I can't seem to see any influencers. So number one, they didn't use influencers retweet campaigns. The second thing I'm going to look at is the bio of those people that retweeted. Is there a similar community? Usually people that are part of community, a lot of time, big projects, big communities, let's imagine Doodles or the D Gods or Solana Monkey Business. A lot of times they create um, umbrella projects, number one, either for the fun or for the uh, to, to 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 for their community DAO to to raise more funds for the DAO and a lot of times, especially on free mints, uh, it is kind of accepted to create those free collections for the community. So usually, what we're gonna see is if this was created by a community, you're gonna see a lot of the initial retweets engagements were from people within the community. So you're gonna see people in their description uh, tagging, tagging, tagging themselves, tagging the project they came from. In um, Art of Mobs case, I don't see any common communities. So that brings me to my last and final uh, conclusion. The last and final way to do it is that Art of Mob used Twitter ads. So they made the tweet, then boosted that tweet using Twitter ads. Now you're probably asking yourself, can does Twitter allow ads for crypto and NFT uh, uh, projects? The, the answer is no, but there's a little like way around that. It usually takes Twitter three to four weeks to identify that your content is NFT or crypto related. So you could go for two to three weeks, even sometimes up to a month, uh, promoting a tweet on Twitter. Um, and then before, and then three, four weeks after, either Twitter will, will identify that this is content that isn't accepted and will reject the ad and maybe uh, restrict access to your advertisement account but you still have access to the to the page itself, but you just can't advertise. I do believe that uh, Art of Mob, this is the strategy that they used. Uh, you just, how it works on Twitter ads is that you just make a tweet on your main page, and then you go to the Twitter ads dashboard and you can just take that tweet and you can target certain people. So you write down people, I wanna target people that are interested in NFTs, people in Ethereum, people interested in Solana, people are interested in XYZ influencers, all right? So let's scroll up all the way to the last day of, their, of phase one, which is the engagement farming phase. So right here, we can see that on May 7th, they announced that Discord is dropping in 24 hours. 
first 1,500 to react will be considered for mob list. And then on May 8th, boom, there we go, Discord link. First 2,500 people to react and show proof in our Discord's raid proof channel will be considered for mob list. So there's something that they did very well on this post, which is incentivizing people to engage with that tweet, uh, with the tweet, with the Discord, and, and incentivizing those people to go on Discord and post proof. What that is going to create is going to make people rush within the Discord. And not only that, people engaging with that tweet will, will literally boost the, engage, the organic reach of that post. All right, so opening the Discord marks the end of phase one. Now, something I didn't cover before, but the entire purpose of phase one is to build that organic reach, is to build those, those is to build that farming, your engagement farming. You're getting as many people in the NFT ecosystem to see your post, to engage with them. That way, for the rest of the project, if you do that, if this is done correctly, for the rest of the lifetime of the project, the marketing campaign of the project, you have very solid organic reach because you already have those 5,000 people right here, the very first tweet. You have 5,000 people at least that engaged with your tweet, that Twitter is going to start showing um, their tweets organically. All right, makes sense. Now, phase two, we are at phase two, which is the Discord release. Um, in this phase, all Art of Mob did was just drop a link and fill up their Discord with as many people as possible. Um, it's hard to tell exactly how many people were there unless you were part of this project early on, but I will anticipate that there was at least 5,000 people that joined the Discord just off that one tweet. Now we're going to see right here that they closed the Discord two days after. So they, boom, they closed the Discord on May 10, told people, uh, told people that, hey, Discord is closed, you can't come in anymore. And they even went out to announce that on their Discord, which I'm going to be, we're going to be going through. But a couple of things this does. Number one is that it creates a sense of exclusivity for the people that were able to make it into the Discord. Um, and number two, it creates a sense of scarcity, telling people like, hey, you know, like, like pay attention or else you're going to miss out on this project. Now, the goal, so phase two, this is something that I see a lot of projects. Again, this is the formula that a lot of projects do. And this is the formula that we follow on most of our client projects. Phase two is incredibly important to go smoothly. The engagement farming phase has to go well. You need on every single post up to the Discord opening needs to have, you need to farm as much engagement as possible because the day the Discord opens, the, the Discord needs to be filled up with couple thousand people, at least 5,000. Anything below 5,000, I will consider to be a, a rough patch for the project. And it's going to be hard to build that momentum and build that traction that's going to get your Discord server to have those 50K, 70K, 100K Discord members. This is the point, phase two, when the Discord opens. This is the point where the project is either going to make it or it's not going to make it. All right? Wag me or, uh, or not going to make it. So... I have made the mistake previously on some past clients trying to resuscitate the project where, we, where the Discord was already open, the Twitter was already launched, and there was no engagement, there was no farming, nothing had happened. And the mistake was to try to resuscitate the project using paid ads, just re, 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 recreating that momentum. It's very hard and it's very costly to do this. That's why it's super important to get the engagement farming phase correctly. That way, the moment you open your Discord, you flood the Discord with all those people. Now, this brings us to phase three. This is the quantum, this I call it the quantum growth phase of the project. Uh, in Art of Mob's case, it was it lasted between two to five weeks, which is typical. And it, it's usually happened on Discord and on Twitter. So this is the game happens on Discord and on Twitter. Projects typically spend 70% of their time on the quantum growth phase. Um, and as we're going to see, we're going to be going on Discord right now, and then I'm going to be showing you Twitter. What does it look like? Alrighty, guys. So here we are on Art of Mobs Discord. As you can see, we are in the announcement section up to the very first announcement that was made on May 2nd. This announcement was um, a teaser. So this was done before the Discord even opened, the calm before the storm. So basically here, uh, they are reinforcing their branding, reinforcing uh, the, the, the storytelling element, 
which is very important in NFT projects. Boom. On May 8th, this is when they opened the Discord. Here, they are welcoming people. So ho, freaking ho, everyone. Welcome to the mob mint. There we go. Again, using the inside joke type of, uh, type of uh, communication. So here we can see ho, ho. A little bird told me Discord might be closing soon. There we go. What did you really think getting in the mob would be that easy? There we go, building a sense of exclusivity, building a sense of scarcity. As you can see, these engagement, the, these, the announcements have about 1,200, 1,400, and right here, 1,000. So I can easily tell that the Discord had at least four or 5,000 people joining on the first day. All right, so now what, 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 what represents what represents the quantum growth phase of a project? This is where you're going to see uh, social media accounts and Discord servers go from like 5,000 to 50,000 in a matter of two, three weeks. Uh, this, is, this is basically what it means, quantum growth. Um, and this is done using, uh, by incentivizing the community to do certain tasks. So in Art of Mob's case, there was fan art contest, activity level contest, invite contest, giveaway bots, Discord, Twitter, rate contest. And on Twitter, it was continued engagement farming. So let's see what does the art contest look like. Right here, we can see on June, on May 9th. So one day, right, when, one day after opening Discord, they already started doing um, art contests. You know, this is, this is a very good thing to do because it creates social proof, social credibility. You know, it shows the rest of the community that people are engaged. People do take this project seriously. And the best way to make people take your project seriously is to show that other people are taking your project seriously. Makes sense? So patience, everyone, patience. Discord closes, closed, everyone. We told you once you're in, you're in. There's no going out. This is not our Discord, okay, scam alert. Now, most of the engagement activity all happened in the minor announcements section. So right here. So let's scroll all the way up. Here we go, first. So on May 9th, this is when they really started doing the games, growing their Discord numbers. Again, on May 9th, we can see fan art winners. So they're incentivizing people to create art for the project. It's a very good way to get people to interact with your product, to get people involved, engaged. Because you bet those people, imagine you spend two hours creating a piece of art. You bet those people are engaged and loyal. And after that, again, taking the lady channel to a whole. So I think this is the art submission contest. So here, boom, another piece of art. We're trying safety, safety notice. On May 17th, this is actually a very interesting uh, announcement that they made, is they are celebrating 50,000 followers on Twitter um, by doing a giveaway. So they had right here, we have the deleted channel. Uh, this was a giveaway that they did on using giveaway bot. So asking people to go react on the bot and then the bot will automatically select winners. Now, why am I, why am I highlighting this announcement? Because it's one thing to hit milestone numbers like 50,000 on Twitter. Those are big numbers and it probably feels good for the team. But it's another thing to hit those milestones but also communicate that with, uh, with your community. People need to feel like they're part of one of the hyped, most hyped project in the entire NFT space. And the best way to do that is to share those milestones with people. So whenever projects are hitting 10K, 15K, 20K on Twitter or Discord, it's great to, to communicate that with the community. Make a big deal out of it because those are the things that built that hype that we're talking about. Um, drank a bit too much last night and is in a hangover for now head over to the lead channel another giveaway happening here they did a sticker contest that will close in 12 hours 20 bubbles on the line will your contribution be enough to earn your spot so here they give out 20 whitelist spots and here those are the winners of the sticker contest yo mobs ticket tools broke and start opening tickets okay perfect so here they just launched something called the mob challenge. So they ask people to take a picture of yourself doing a pistol sign uh, with around like, uh, certain landmarks or monuments in people's cities. 
So right here, you can see again, getting people engaged. All right, so if we keep scrolling here, this is an interesting post. So congrats to the Raiders on our last post. So the, whenever they make a tweet on Twitter, they ask people to go rate it, so to go engage, and then they select winners. Great way to drive engagement. Here we have Mercury Wallet submission. This was on June the 2nd. Started taking wallets from the people that were whitelisted. Um, Art of Mob movie night. There we go. Great community building activities. First show of the mob winner. There we go. So you see how they were able to build that 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 really strong community vibe. Um, incredible incredible job these guys did on June seven. They did an AMA. Now one thing that is a lot more subtle that is a very common way to um, grow your grow grow your community. So here you're probably seeing 113,000 people are in that Discord. It's a lot of people. How do you get that many people? Uh, he, the number one way that I usually see projects do that is through invite contests. It's a very, very straightforward way uh, to do things. Um, then this is when you incentivize people to invite their friends to join your server and they win whitelist spots. So they make an announcement. First, 20 people to invite 20 friends get instant whitelist. And all this is tracked using an invite bot. And then once that threshold is hit, then you increase the amount of people you need to invite. So at first it's 20, then first 20 people invite 30 friends, then first 20 people invite 40 friends, 50 friends, 100 friends. And that's how you see servers really grow in size. All right, makes sense. Now let's go to Twitter and see what does the quantum growth phase look on Twitter. Here uh, I've written that it is continued engagement farming via whitelist giveaways, giveaways, but giveaways twice. So right here, let's go back on Twitter. As we saw on May 8, they opened their Discord. So May 10 was their next tweet in phase three. So here, Discord closed, but the mob is open for 10 days. Follow, retweet, and like. There we go. So here, again, the call to action. So for the next, for the rest of the lifetime of the project, the marketing span of the project, the template is very similar to how it used to be during the engagement farming. Attention grabbing headline, but this time, instead of telling people to interact to be considered for whitelist, you're telling people that you are giving whitelists, so a certain number of whitelist spots. Uh, all you need to do is follow, retweet, and tag friends. In this case, uh, I see they're giving usually 10 mob lists, so 10 whitelists per tweet. This is a great number. I see sometimes a common mistake I see is projects giving like 100 whitelists on, on tweets. And that might be, that might sound like, great, let's just give whitelists to people. But it could also, it removes the sense of exclusivity and high perceived value of your project. So you want to keep things exclusive. You want to make it hard for people to earn whitelists, basically. So we're going to see that for the next, for the rest of the project, basically, same formula. Attention grabbing headline, 10 mob list with a storyboard. This was a, a, a teaser. Uh, here's an offer you can't refuse. 10, 10 mob list. RT follow tag three mobster. One day after, attention grabbing headline. Are you with the mob or with the mob? Then mob list. Again, locked and loaded. This was four days after. Then mob list follow RT. May 20, two days, two days after. Don't say it, spray it. Again, another storyboard. This was two days after. The mob is taking you for a ride. Once your loyalty is earned, you'll show you the road ahead. Trust us blindly. Boom. Take what's yours. Here they open their Discord again and they give 50 mob lists for people. So before they were giving 10, they were getting on average 6,000. Here they really wanted to drive a lot of engagement. So they give 50 mob lists. Boom. Here we can see almost 10,000 likes. Great, great, great organic reach these guys were getting. So again, here Art of Mob, Mob Challenge. Boom. Over 50 cities showcasing. And May 8th, similar, similar. So you're going to see here they have, they've announced a partnership, luxury partnership with a professional sports team. Something I'm going to be talking about. Uh, Solana Summer has officially begun June 21st. So here on June 14, they announced the mint date. All right, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. 10 mob list spots again. 
again, engagement farming, it should be engagement farming, the ice chico, they never lie. Again, as you can see, this is the exact same template that is followed. And this is where you really, we, we're gonna see Art of Mob scale their Twitter size. So let's do something interesting. All right, guys, here we are. So right now we are on Social Blade, uh, an analytics suit for Twitter. And I wanna show you something. Remember, what was the day they opened their Twitter, their Discord, apologies. It was May 8th, correctly? So here we can see May 9th was the first day where the quantum growth phase has begun. Look at how their Twitter followers has exploded over the next two or three weeks. Um, here we can see, I can see from the daily, um, from the daily follower count that they have been losing a lot of followers lately. It is normal that you will have a lot of bots following your Twitter, a lot of, uh, a lot of bots entering your discord. It's just people do that. People have like, hundreds of accounts to interact. People want to get those whitelists. Uh, so it is normal to see that drop, but that is proof that they hit 200,000 followers on Twitter in only uh, three weeks after launch. That's incredible. All right, guys, so now this marks the end of our quantum growth phase. Twitter is booming, Discord is booming. Now we are in the maturing phase of the project. And this, in Art of Mob's case, was done between week four and week six. And the objective of this is to attract smart buyers and build trust. So let's see how did Art of Mob do that. Attracting smart buyers. This is something that I wanted to give a little bit of context. Who are smart buyers? Smart buyers are people that have experience buying NFTs. They're usually involved in other communities. And those are the people that usually buy and sell and flip NFTs. These are the people that come in and sweep the floor by like five to 10 NFTs off the floor. Those are the people that are really going to move the project up or down. So I want you to think as smart of smart buyers are like sharks in a bloody ocean. Give the ocean a blood of a drop and they will all come rushing into feast. Smart buyers are after potential profit. So how do you attract smart buyers? By showing them um, certain vital signs in your project that uh, attracts them. So number one, what attracts smart NFT sharks? Whitelist opportunity via collapse, hype, aka big numbers. Other whales talking about the project and building high levels of trust. So whitelist opportunities, we're going to be covering that right now on Discord. Um, about this part, number three, other whales talking about your project. I think this is what made Art of Mob such a big project. I'm going to be showing you exactly how they did that. So whitelist opportunities via collapse. So as you can see, if you go right here on their Discord, so Art of Mobs Discord, you can see here they have collab managers. So depending what time you online you come, you're going to see there's between one and three people online. Um, as you can see, those people are responsible for, um, for organizing collaborations with other big projects within the NFT ecosystem. And we can see just here from the proof so they closed all the channels related to collabs. But here you can see I was able to get my hands on a couple of screenshots of other communities asking um, for asking questions related to the collab form. So hello, I submitted a DAO collab form a few hours ago. Want to know the status of that, please. Jared asks, how often do whitelist collab forms get looked at? Hi, I have filled a collab form. And this is really the idea here is to give whitelists to other projects. Now you're probably asking yourself, how do I get those projects to come in and ask for a whitelist? The answer is you don't have to do anything if your project is hyped. So if you have those big numbers, if, if you are doing all that noise on Twitter, those projects, big projects usually have what we call alpha hunters. Those guys, their only job is to go out and hunt for whitelist spots for uh, their community. So all you need to do on Discord, all you do, all Art of Mob did is just open a channel with a whitelist sub with a what, collab form, uh, and then you can just go. It opens a Google form, and then you just have to apply. And the job of the collab managers is to review those and select the projects that are worthy of a collaboration with Art of Mob. So a common question, and this is something that's interesting that I, that I had to figure out through a lot of trial and error. Um, being part of different projects. And what is the whitelist distribution between projects, projects, communities, and other communities? 
So as we saw, Art of Mob was giving whitelists to their community as well as to outside communities. How much should you give for, how, what is the whitelist distribution? Do you give 50-50? Do you give 60-70? 60-40? And the answer is the, the right amount is 70% goes to your community and 30% goes to external communities. The answer to that is because smart buyers, so the people coming in from outside communities, these are the guys that are going to sell you out. But what those guys are looking for is whenever the mint is happening, they're looking for volume. They're seeing, is the collection moving? Are people buying? And whenever they see it crosses a certain threshold, usually 70% of mint is completed, that's when they're going to all hop in and, and buy. That's when you see projects that are 70% sold out, they sell out instantly in, in the next couple minutes. Because those, this is when the smart buyers are there, they're watching, they're like sharks, you know, watching, waiting their time to bite. When they see the opportunity, bam. So how do you get that initial traction? It is with your community members, the people that genuinely love your project, that have been part of it, that have engaged, engaged with your tweets, that have made art, uh, that have been part of your AMAs, that have played your poker nights, all, all those things within your Discord. Those are the people that are going to mint regardless of less. They're more impulsive, less smart. That's the idea. And those are the people. Those are great people to have and to sell to. So Art of Mob's power move. So there's one thing that Art of Mob did, and this is this is the number three, which is getting other whales to talk about the project. So Art of Mob did something incredibly great, incredibly smart, which was announcing that their mint was going to be 25 Solana. So right now, I'm going to be taking you to their announcement section. And here, at some point, we're going to see that around here we go so on may 18 on june 18 three days before the mint they made a very simple announcement saying like hello everyone due to major improvements to our roadmap and after discussing with the finance department we have decided to move our mint price to 25 solana major announcement in the next 24 hours one last time trust the mob this announcement created such a controversy within the nft ecosystem 25 solana what the hell, you know, look at all those clown emojis for the rest of the project for the next couple, like day, actually for the next day, look at all the hate they were getting, you know, trust the mob, everyone, 700 clown reactions, 25 Solana commitment, I'm mob for life, boom, you know, probably one of the founders tattooing themselves, trust the, trust the freaking mob. And not only did they do that on Discord, they went all the way to coordinate with Magic Eden, here, look at Magic Eden. So Magic Eden on June 18, same day, announcement incoming. I understand, reference from the Godfather. Boom, breaking news. Art of Mob sets one of the highest minting price ever on Solana as they pump their five soul mint price to 25 soul. Supply size, 10,000. You know, so they even got Magic Eden <laughs> to coordinate that stunt with them. Very well done, guys. Very well done. But this isn't the only plan the mob has. Check in 24 hours before the mint for an even bigger announcement. And if you go back right here to their announcement, we are going to see. So right here, the day before, they did FUD. They, they had made an announcement saying, FUD, clown us, hate us. We'll be laughing at the end. Trust the mob. When we tell you, everyone, you really want this mob list. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so the moment you've all been waiting for, everyone, surprise, motherfuckers, it was a free mint all along. Boom, you know, announcing one day after this was a free mint. So why was that such a good move? Here we go. So I found on Twitter, a lot of big people, a lot of big Twitter influencers have been talking about uh, this mint. So here we can see Broke talking 25 freaking Solana for a mint. <laughs> what the hell are you guys building an Eiffel Tower? You know, this gets conversation talking, gets people talking about your project. And this is great. This is the way, this is the hardest thing I find, getting other people to talk about your project. It's one thing spending marketing dollar to, 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 to buy basically conversation, but it's another thing getting that organic conversation. And that 25 soul announcement did that for them. So finally, uh, for the maturing phase, this is where we want to build trust. So this is where we drop 
usually um, projects, they drop their website, they drop their roadmap, they do the EMAs. So in Art of Mobs case, let's go to their website. They dropped their website two weeks before Mint. And this is where we're going to see that they did something very well. So if we mob in, I want, I want you to see this. Not sure if you could hear that, but so let's go through their website very quickly. So who are we? Meet the mobsters roadmap. Uh, like this is interesting. So right here, what are they basically trying to create? Um, from what I read, so the gap, the current NFT system is heavily revolving around JPEG type of NFTs. As the space is maturing, the next natural evolution will be the adoption of moving JPEGs. Boom, there we go. So the solution here, you can see that the website was optimized for mobile and not uh, desktop. So if we, if we go right here and we inspect the page, we are going to go to solution right here. So this is how we see on mobile. So basically in a nutshell, these guys are building a marketplace for GIFs and videos. So they're building the Magic Eden equivalent or OpenSea equivalent for GIFs and videos. So you can go staking, you stake your art, your piece of art and you get pop token and that will give you uh, certain utility within the ecosystem. So scalability, I'll let you go through that by yourself. But as you can tell, a great website, very well done. This is reassuring for the community. When you see such a nice website, it does tell you that the team behind this project are builders. And not just, this wasn't a website done on Wix or on Shopify. This is a very well done website. Next thing is Magic Eden listing at least six days before the mint. So if we go on Magic Eden, so here, right? All right, so right here, we are on Magic Eden's launchpad. As you can see, most of the hot projects that usually launch in the Solana space, they launch on the platform. So here we can see Art of Mob were here. They launched June 21st. Uh, how, do you, how do you land on the Magic Eden launchpad? The answer is there isn't a way to uh, apply. You get reached out to by Magic Eden on Twitter. So build that hype, get that engagement farming going, and Magic Eden will be the ones reaching out to you with a proposition to be on their launch pad. They do take 10% of the mint plus 10% of all royalties. So keep that in mind. But other than that, that's the, that it is, it is worth it. And being listed there six days before at least is very important because people check in every single day uh, and seeing you day in and day out uh, does create that, that, that trust factor basically in them. Another thing they did is, of course, obviously AMAs. They had one AMA with Magic Eden. This is this is a very common procedure, especially if you're minting on Magic Eden. Magic Eden will give you the option to make an AMA with them. So it's basically an AMA hosted by Magic Eden. Definitely something that does build trust. And finally, we another thing that builds trust is having major announcements slash collapse. In Art of Mobs case, it was announcing a collaboration with a professional basketball team. They even made a blog article about that on Medium. What I find funny and what I find interesting is that this sounds like such a big announcement. This is like, oh my God, like how were they able to land this? This is great. Like these guys are serious. And yeah, they, 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 they did great. This is incredible. But what made me laugh is that the team that they had a, the partnership with is a basketball team based in Lebanon a country that I know the founder of Art of Mob is from there. So am I. Uh, this is where I grew up. Right now I live in Canada, but originally I grew up in Lebanon. And the idea is that they signed a partnership with a basketball team called El Riyadi, which is probably one of the biggest teams in Lebanon. But the idea is that it, it in the international scene, it's not a big team, but they made it sound like it is. So... This is kind of like a marketing morale is where do it's something this is something Tim Ferriss said. It's not about what you say, but it's about how you say it. 
So you can have a product, you can have an idea that you can make it sound like the best thing ever. It's one way to say, hey, this is my product or this is my project. And it's another way to say, hey, this is my project. And this is the best invention since peanut butter. You get what I mean? So finally, week five, this was mint. Week six, phase five, mint. At this stage, one week before mint, whatever has been done has been done. There isn't much to do. And at this stage, the last thing we want to happen is really for the Discord to get hacked. And luckily for Art of Mob, they only got hacked earlier uh, when their Discord was open. So we can see on June 3rd, they got hacked right here. It could have been devastating if they got hacked the day of the mint or the day before the mint. I've seen big projects, especially on Ethereum, when you have to create your own mint page. I've seen big projects just get their entire mint ruined just because they got hacked. It is devastating. And this is where it is very important to have Discord security protocols up um, and ready. Basically, um, it's it, it does get a little bit technical. I don't want to get too technical. This is something that I have. Uh, this is something uh, where it takes a Discord expert. For example, we have a Discord expert, a security expert on our team that makes sure every server we work with has security at 100%. But the general idea, the best practices is make sure that two-factor authentication is on, on everyone on the team, including moderators. Number one, uh, be skeptical when free moderators reach out to you on Discord and tell you, hey, uh, you know, I love the project. I would love to moderate for free just in exchange for free NFTs. Most people have good intentions. I'm not saying everyone has bad intentions. Some people love your project. They want to get involved. But this is a common way hackers infiltrate your Discord. They get certain uh, server permissions. And this is when they can start introducing uh, um, uh, malware links they can uh, insert webhooks within your Discord. So the general consensus, be very careful who you, who you give permission to. And if you do give permission to moderators, only allow them to, uh, to, 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 to chat and delete messages. Don't allow them to, to, to delete servers, server settings, to change server settings, or to change uh, channel settings. All right. So this brings us to the final phase of this video, which is kind of a wrap up of what were the features of a winning project. So we have four features of a winning project. Number one, we have social proof. We have a sense of exclusivity. We have a sense of scarcity and we have a sense of high perceived value. And in Art of Mob's case, this is how I would personally rank them. Again, these guys did an incredible job all, all, all. Every, every step of the way, they did a great job and the results talk for themselves. I did a small ranking criteria, not necessarily to show what the team did well or how they could do better. They did a very good job. It's more to show where their strength was. So every project has different strengths. Some projects are sold only out of exclusivity. You want to hop in, you want to ape in just because it's a very exclusive project and doesn't necessarily have a high like social proof um, in it. In Art of Mob's case, it had social proof. Number one, almost 200,000 Twitter followers, 113K on Discord. Big numbers right there. Number two, we have a sense of exclusivity. This is done by making people feel like they're part of something big, uh, like they're, they are part of something, and they, they, not everyone has access to what they have access to, so they feel exclusive. Uh, Art of Mob were able to do this by closing their Discord, by being scarce with the amount of whitelist they were giving away. Then we have scarcity. This in within the NFT space, this is usually accomplished by reducing collection size. So collections that have 3000 NFTs usually are more scarce, scarce than NFTs that are uh, 10,000 collection. Artemab was a 10K collection. So on the scarcity, they are neutral. Finally, high perceived value. Are people willing to pay for your project or to grind to spend that time on Discord? In Art of Mob's uh, case, yes, absolutely. Uh, social proof does create high perceived value. On top of that, they were able to do that by having big collaborations, so big partnerships, and by having all that organic conversation happening on Twitter with their 25 Solana announcement. With that, guys, 
this marks the end of, of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have any more questions for me or my team, feel free to check out our website. Link is in the bio. Uh, with that said, guys, I wish you all an incredible week. Keep hustling, keep learning, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Take care.